With March Madness in full effect, I want to talk about the NBA draft a little bit. And I've reacted to the Athletics, ESPNs, and the Ringers mock draft in the past. So today I'm going to react to a company that I've actually worked with a little bit. And we're going to react to Bleacher Report's new 2024 mock draft by Jonathan Wasserman, who is their head draft analyst. And if you guys do enjoy this style of content, I'd appreciate you dropping a thumbs up. He did mention that this mock receives a shakeup with a new name at the number two spot for the first time all season. Excited to see who that is. So the number one overall pick, he does have it being Alex are. We has going to the Washington Wizards. I think that's pretty much good with me since they traded away Daniel Gafford at the 2024 trade deadline. I think Star is in play for almost every team number one overall. I think it gets a little bit interesting with Detroit because I feel like Jalen Duran is a long-term building block and you have to kind of have that debate with yourself if you're Detroit saying, will Sar and Duran work together if Sar doesn't develop an outside shot? Even if it doesn't come, he could still be an all-world defender that will obviously play in Washington, that would obviously play in Memphis, that would obviously play in like Portland as well. I think San Antonio, it would play because Wemby can space the floor. I think Detroit is the only team that it could have a little bit of question marks, but I feel like Sar is trending towards being that number one guy unanimously. All right, he's got Rob Dillingham going to to Detroit. I hate this. Oh my God, why? Why? Oh man, I'm all for the Rob Dillingham hype and he did not play well against um, Oakland and this came out before the Oakland game. So I'll give him a benefit of the doubt there. And I don't think that should drop him by any means. March shouldn't have that much say into your draft stock unless you go on a crazy run or you have like five bad games in a row, but that means your team's pretty much in the national championship. But I don't like Rob Dillingham to the Pistons. I would be okay with him in San Antonio. I would be okay with him in Washington, even if he's coming off the bench in Memphis. But what's the point of them drafting another guard in Detroit when already they're having issues with Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham. I think it can be fine going forward, but now you're just rehashing that issue with putting Rob Dillingham into the mix. He's the shortest guy out of those three. He's 6'3", 175. You're automatically drafting somebody to come off the bench with the second overall pick. I don't really think it'd be smart to move Ivy to the three, a sword to the four, and then Cade to the two. So yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of Rob Dillingham going to the Pistons. Like I said, it could be other teams at number two. I would not like it going to Portland. I could be talked into it if it was like Washington or San Antonio, but Detroit, I, I honestly hate this. I'm not a huge fan. At three, he's got Reed Shepard. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of Reed Shepard hype as of late when I reacted to the Ringers mock draft with Kevin O'Connor. He had him going number one overall to San Antonio. Here they have Shepard go number three. I do think like Dillingham and Shepard are still almost in play to go as the number one college guys off the board. I feel like if Nikola Topic is on the board, they would probably go Topic pitch still. Reese Shea would obviously be in play. I like Reed Shepard a ton in San Antonio. Three seems a little rich for me though. I mean, other college prospects like Cody Williams has not helped his draft stock. I know he's playing with an ankle injury at Colorado right now. Jacoby Walter did have a good game against Colgate, but he did struggle in the Big 12 tournament. So I don't know who else would be in three or in play at three here from college. Shepard, I like at three more than I like Dillingham at two, but I also like Shepard to Detroit more than I like Dillingham to Detroit. So this is a weird ordering so far. At number four, he's got Charlotte taking Zachary Reese who we talked about as a guy that could potentially go number one. I think Jonathan Gavoni of ESPN and even Sam Vecini of The Athletic have been adamant about Reese Ashe potentially going number one. I still don't see it. I mean, I think like like I said before with Sar, when it comes down to it, most teams that would be debating between Sar and Reese Ashe can go with either one. And I would always tend to go into somebody that has all defensive caliber team potential on that end of the floor in Alex Sar. Reese Ashe is never going to be a one or a two on a really good team. Maybe not even a number three because I worry about the shot creation a little bit, but he's somebody that has a very talented offensive game. It's pretty mature already for somebody that's just 18 years old. Obviously, he's playing very good competition over there. I wonder how it would translate to the next level. I would just, that's got to be such a crazy change of scenery. Going and playing like professional basketball over there to going and playing for the Charlotte Hornets, who have been like one of the most immature teams over the last couple of years. I mean, he would be a good fit, I think, with the mellow ball, and you're building something with Brandon Miller and Mark Williams as well. So I don't mind this at four. Like, I, I'm, I'm cool with this. Cody Williams going to the Trailblazers at five. Yeah, Cody Williams has not been good, and Colorado has won two games so far as I'm recording this because they had that play-in game against Boise State, and Cody Williams has kind of been phased out of this offense like I said before, he is dealing with an ankle injury. And I know some other players have been dealing with injuries like that, like DJ Wagner this year and Isaiah Collier has obviously had his injuries. But Cody Williams has definitely not helped this draft stock. You're pretty much drafting him based on the potential that he has shown so far for the Buffaloes. And I think I'm fine with him in Portland. But honestly, I would maybe trend towards Ron Holland a little bit more than Cody Williams right now, just because I like Ron Holland's defense. And even if that shot never develops, I still think he could be a very valuable defender. Cody Williams, I, I think, has a little bit of room to grow on the defensive end of the floor and his offense 
is fine. I don't think he's really that much better than Ron Holland, at least in the half court set. The only thing is he's got a more potent jump shot. It looks a little bit prettier. It falls in a little bit more, but it's not like Cody Williams is taking them at a super high volume. But Cody Williams definitely has the potential on both ends of the floor to be a really good player. I'm just fine with Portland getting him. If they had like Stefan Castle or another guard going to Portland, I'd be like, what are we doing? So Toronto Raptors at six selecting Ron Holland. I mean, with the way the strength is falling, like Nikola Topic still on the board. I would look at him a little bit. Cam Whitmore is an interesting interesting comparison just because Whitmore was kind of a good shooter at Nova. Ron Holland is not a good shooter for the G League Ignite, but he's somebody that can drive well inside. He's a good defender, and I think he's going to develop somewhat of a passing game. I think there is some inconsistencies, and with the NBA announcing that the G League Ignite is done at the end of this year, I mean, it kind of shows that these guys were kind of put in some really poor situations, and I think with the NIL, I wonder if the Ignite is just going to fold completely. Maybe they try to develop more of like an AAU circuit, kind of like the overtime elite, like in high school play. I don't really know where they're going. Holland to the Raptors. I'm fine with this. It's a weird fit with him and Scotty Barnes. I think you're just kind of throwing in that Pascal Siakam Barnes weird fit that they had before. And with the way that this draft is falling, I like Nikola Topic here. So he has Montez Buzelas going to the Grizzlies at number seven. Um, I think this is fine. I think the Grizzlies, like he would fit their timeline, obviously. Like they're still on the younger side with Bain, Triple J, and Ja, like getting them from the 2018, 19, and 20 draft classes. Gigi Jackson looks really good. Vince Williams looks really good. Buzelas could definitely take some time to develop. Could play for the hustle a little bit with their G League team. His shot has come along a little bit as of late. And like I said about Holland, like he's in a poor situation. But if he actually has a consistent jumper, somebody with his size, it says he's 6'8". Here. I've seen 6'10 before as well, um, and he can handle the rock very well for somebody with his size. I like the upside play for Memphis here at seven, and they have a chance to take a risk on him because even if they drafted a bus at seven, they'll be fine. But other teams that are picking here in the top 10, maybe like Charlotte, Detroit, Washington, kind of need to hit on this pick. At eight, the Rockets get Nikola Topic. Um, I'm not a fan of this. I'm not. Um, Fred Van Vliet is still there, and I know he might not be back for year three. It's not fully guaranteed, and he's a little bit older, but I think they would also think about re-signing him for more of like a bench veteran and role. I mean, I'm sure there's a good relationship between the two parties. And then you would hope Amen Thompson is your lead point guard going forward. So I guess this is probably best player available. So I get that. I just don't really like the fit of Nikola Topic as like a lead ball handler in Houston when you drafted Amen Thompson last year. I think Topic could have a little bit more upside long term, at least as a playmaker. And both of the players between him and Amen Thompson have questions about their outside jumper. I would just feel like if this is the way the draft fell, Houston should think about trading the pick or just trying to trade up or if so, yeah, if somebody wants Topic, that would give them maybe some nice draft capital going forward. I would do that rather than just crowding your backcourt, which already has Jalen Green back there already as well. So Utah, Stefan Castle at nine. Yeah, I mean, that would be a great Nikola Topic pick. I'm fine with this. I think there's still some debate between me. If I like Castle or Isaiah Collier a little bit more, I think as a true one, like a point guard, I like Collier more because I think Castle is going to be more of a wing, honestly, at the NBA level. I don't think he's going to be a lead ball handler or that, like that lead number one for general, but it's a high upside play. I actually like that fit a ton with him in Utah and him and Keontae Jordan in that backcourt next year would honestly be really fun. Like I, if there's some lineups with like Keontae George at the one, Stefan Castle at the two, Market in three, Hedrick's four, Kessler five. I'm watching a ton of jazz games. And when at 10, Donovan Klingon, I mean, this is probably not what the, I guess, Hawks fans want to hear. I mean, they could go with somebody a little bit more upside like Jacoby Walter, but honestly, like Clint Capella should not be back next year. You'd hope to start in Neka Kungwu. Let's have Donovan Klingon be the backup. He's somebody that can help you right away. He's NBA ready. And I think this is where he should go on draft night. I like him more than Yves Misi, Kalel Ware, Deron Holmes, Kyle Filipowski, Zach Eady. So I like this for Atlanta at 10. And you have to think to yourself, like, do you want to draft another guard? For now, you still have Murray, Young, and Kobe Bufkin, who they drafted in the first time last year, as your guards. They have so many forwards. Jalen Johnson, DeAndre Hunter, Sadiq Bey, if they want to bring him back, but he's got that ACL injury. Bogdan Bogdanovich. What's going on with Adrian Griffin? I don't know. So I don't mind them taking Donovan Kling in here specifically. I think him or Filipowski would make sense for sure. So OKC at 11, Devin Carter. I kind of like this. This is high for Devin Carter. I haven't really seen him in like that borderline top 10 range, but he's one of my favorite prospects in this draft. He's a difficult shot maker. He's a good ball handler, a fantastic defender. The dude is an insane rebounder for somebody at 6'3 as well. Could come in right away for the Thunder and contribute um, from day one. Do they need another card? I, I don't know what's going on with Josh Giddy. Will he be gone at the end of the year? There's a chance. Uh, Kaysen Wallace, you think is going to have a larger role next year. Carter can maybe fulfill those minutes if they did move on from Giddy at the end of the year. So I like Carter going to OKC. They also need big man help. So like Filipowski's on the board. Eve Misi's on the board. I love Tower Smith a ton of the G League Ignite, but I'm a big Devin Carter fan, so I'm okay with this, even though it's kind of high. Whoa, Terrence Shannon to the Bulls at 12. I hate this so much. I don't like this at all. Wow. 
wow, wow, wow. Okay, so Terry Shannon's had a very good uh, Big Ten tournament for Illinois. They've won it all. The dude is 23 as well, so he's on the older side. He was on some Texas Tech teams like earlier in his career a couple years ago. Like he was on those Tech teams like a year after they lost in March Madness to Virginia. And I don't like this for Chicago. Now, I guess it could make sense if Chicago is still trying to be in purgatory next year. Like they keep Levine, they re-sign DeRozan, they don't trade Vucevic, they don't trade Caruso, which that is the worst possibility they can do. I think I'd go for a higher upside play here at 12. I think I would go for somebody with a little bit more potential. Um, even if you want to go somebody that's not a freshman, I would still look at Kyle Filipowski here for them. They could definitely use some big man help with Patrick Williams becoming a free agent. I don't like Vucevic long-term. I would really like Tyler Smith for them at 12 here. I mean, Jacoby Walter out of Baylor, I think has way more potential than Terrence Shannon, who could be good for you right away, but that's not really what Chicago needs. They need somebody that can definitely develop there and have a little bit higher of a ceiling long-term with some of the building blocks that we've seen this year, like Ayo Desunmu and most notably Kobe White. So this is really high for Shannon. I, I think I would take him around the 20 range, like 15 to 20 in the lottery, especially with a team like Chicago. I'm not a huge fan of this. So Pelicans 13 selecting Isaiah Collier. I'm cool with them getting a point guard as well. I think they could also be a team that could look at some big man help here. Uh, this could be a Yee Misi play with uh, Jonas Valanciunas becoming a free agent. I, I will be adamant about Tyler Smith should be a lottery pick. Filipowski's still on the board. Daron Holmes for Dayton could be fun here. But I like Collier. I think he's a good enough player to go in the lottery. I think there's like debate that he should go definitely higher than Terrence Shannon, Devin Carter, Donovan Klingon as an individual prospect. Those teams really don't need um, a lead ball handler, maybe score first guard like Isaiah Collier. I like him a ton to the Pelicans here at 13 here. Um, and he could be somebody right off the bench next year, can compete with Jose Alvarado, Dyson Daniels, and whoever they envision as like the backup guard to CJ McCollum in 25. Portland getting Kyle Filipowski here at 14. I like this draft for them so far. Like Cody Williams and Kyle Filipowski, like those are positions to need. I'm just glad it's not mocks that have like guards going to Portland. Would there be some other players that I'd like here? Yeah, I'd like Tyler Smith. I mean, Cody Williams is also an interesting fit at five, but I like Phil Paskin. I think getting him at 14 is good value. A big man that has a talented post game can space the floor. Honestly, pretty good court vision as well for somebody of his size. I honestly think he'll be better than Santi Aldama as well. So Miami Heat getting Dalton Connect. I mean, this is pretty sick. I would love Connect in Miami. I don't know where all they'll be picking. I don't know if Connect will be a lottery pick, but this is basically Hame Hakez all over again. I mean, this dude is a very talented scorer. He's 22 years old. He's very close to his ceiling, but for somebody that could just be like a microwave scorer off the bench, somebody that can really kind of also slow the game down as well and run a second unit. I mean, it'd be fun to see him in Miami. So I'm, I'm a fan of that mock pick. Khalil Ware going to the Sixers at 16. I'm all for the Sixers getting a backup big man. Let's no longer see like Mo Bamba, the Dwight Howards, the Andre Drummond. It's just like that revolving door of backup big man behind Embiid, who has had injury concerns. So let's go out and get Khalil Ware. There are some like motor issues, like motivational things that I've heard about him. And that's obviously something that like us non-scouts and like people in front offices and journalists, like we don't know that because that's a big part of the draft process is their character. Is there just individual personalities too? That could be red flags. There's medical stuff also with these prospects that we don't really know about. So I've been reading some stuff that that's why Khalil Ware has been going that high with his stats being really good and his play. Like he should be a lottery pick just based off play alone. So 16, I don't think this is high. I'm a fan of Khalil Ware, especially if he can space the floor at the next level. So this is pretty low. Jacoby Walter at 17. I've seen him go as high as like, so, like four in some mocks. So 17 seems kind of low for Walter. I think the potential is high. I know we played poorly in the Big 12 tournament. I don't want to look into that too much. And I think he's somebody that could be a very good three-level scorer at the next level. Could there be some defensive inconsistencies? Yes. Could there be some ball handling inconsistencies? Yes, but he's 19 years old. Let him develop. And honestly, Toronto is a good fit. Just at 17 seems kind of low. Tyler Smith to the Suns at 18. All right. Um... I love Tyler Smith as a prospect. I had actually, you know what? Honestly, they would throw him out there like day one. I'm for this because I think Tyler Smith could be a top 10 player in this draft. Um, I don't know about top five, but I could honestly preach that depending on where he ends up. If it's a good situation, uh, he's somebody that has a very good looking jumper at 6'11", can handle the ball well for his size, and is a good defender as well. So sign me up, somebody that can play the four or the five, space the floor, handle the rock. Suns would be getting a very good player at 18, and in my opinion, a top 10 guy in this class. Nixon at 19, Jared McCain. I'm cool with this. I mean, a spot up shooter can play off ball a little bit, um, probably better than on ball as well. And I think not bad defender also, and somebody that could just be a good shooter for them. Um, Miles McBride has been really good for the Knicks as of late. So 
so McCain would probably be the third string point guard next year behind Brunson and McBride, but that's fine. Injuries will happen. Get the depth. I actually think the Knicks should keep both their first rounders, but I doubt that that'll happen. At 20, the Hawks getting Johnny Furphy. He should stay another year at Kansas. I'm not really a big fan of his game at 20 right away here to Atlanta. I would look at Ryan Dunn just because of the defensive potential, um, or we actually know how good he's going to be defensively. Slasher, cutter. I think I would take him at 20. And if you actually wanted to go the upside play like Johnny Furphy, I would just look at Keyshawn George from Miami instead. You may see going to the Magic at 21. I'm cool with them getting a big man. It's funny because like I feel like in all my mocks, they're always picking like right outside the lottery at at, uh, 15, 16. Now they're picking at 21. So it's a different kind of tier of prospects for them. But yeah, I'm fine with Yves Misi. He can give kind of some competition to Gogo Batadze, Wendell Carter, Mo Wagner. They obviously need some shooting here. So I'm sure they would have loved like Jared McCain going to them. So I'd like Keyshawn George or um, Trey Alexander here at 21. And I've just noticed he hasn't had Tijon Salon go yet. Wow. I've seen Salon go as high as like five in some mocks. I think like Kevin O'Connor had him in the top five. So he doesn't have Tijon Salon in the top 21 picks, which is kind of crazy. Nick's 22. I feel like if Salon was on the board, they'd definitely take him. Um, so yeah, Kevin McCullough, hate this. I'm not a big McCullough fan to the Knicks. I don't love him as a prospect either. I don't think I would use a first rounder on him. Um, early second rounder, fine. Or if it's your second first rounder, sure. Um, I do wonder how his like kind of shot creating ability will be at the next level. How will he be as a defender? I actually think he like he can also hard. I've heard some motor issues with him as well. I know he was a transfer going to Kansas, so maybe there were some leadership issues over there um, as he was a little bit older. I mean, I'm fine with the Knicks taking, but uh, no, no. I mean, with Salon on the board or Bobby Clemen, I'd probably just rather take one of those high upside plays or Deron Holmes as well. So the Pelicans take um Urich. Um, out of the NBA Africa Academy. Don't know much about him. I've said this every time that he's mocked in any of these. Crazy, he's born in 05. Damn, I'm getting old. I gotta watch more film on him because now it's looking like he's might be a guaranteed first rounder. So I'm gonna dive into him and I'm excited about it because there's uh, Kamal Malak who's going to Duke next year, um, coming from the Academy. Top five projected prospect. It's looking like the Academy um, in Africa is more of a pipeline for the NBA, which is really cool. Yeah, T-John Salon going to the Wizards at 24, bro. I feel like in some mocks, if the Wizards fall to like five or six, you could see them taking Salon. So getting him at 24 is incredible value. I don't think he falls that far on draft night because of his size, his defensive potential, and his ability to knock down shots. Um, I would love this for Washington. Like you're, there, you're ending up with Alex Saar and T. John Salon in the same class. Let's get all the international prospects. You got Denny of Dion there. You got Bilal Koulibaly. Let's add Salon and Saar. I'm cool with that. That's a nice share for them. Tristan De Silva to the Cavs at 25. I've definitely mocked this before. I think somebody that can contribute for them right away. High basketball IQ and honestly has a nice offensive touch as well around the rim. Bobby Clinton go to the Bucks at 26. I don't know if I like Clintman to the Bucs. I think they need somebody that can contribute right away. That could be Clintman because he did play at Wake Forest last year, uh, played in the National Basketball League this year. I think he already declared for the NBA draft already. So he could step on the floor day one. Um, they've done a poor job. I feel like developing Marjan Beauchamp and Andre Jackson so far in their young careers, I would just maybe take like Deron Holmes, take a big man here with Brooke Lopez getting up there in age. Um, you could also take Zach Eady if you wanted to. I would probably take Eady here over Clemen if if I'm a walkie. Keyshawn George going to the Timberwolves at 27. I like this a ton. I, I think he's somebody that has high 3D upside. Might not be good right away. He's a little bit older for a freshman as well. Um, I think that's just becoming more of a trend. And obviously, if you guys play like high school sports, you know about that. If you're like, I guess you play down a grade, obviously it makes you look a little bit better. It doesn't really affect like your college chances at all. Probably it helps it because you're playing, I guess, competition inferior to you. I don't know though. I was never really in that position, but I just noticed like Rob Dillingham's an older freshman, same with Reed Shepard as well. But Keyshawn George could be a good 3D guy. I actually like this fit on the Timberwolves. Bob Carrington, go to the Nuggets at 28. I'm cool with them getting a point guard here. If it's Tyra Kolick, it could be Bob Carrington. Maybe Tyrese Proctor, maybe, but I like Carrington and his upside. Played well for Pitt this year towards the end of the season as well. Only 18 years old. See, like that's a true freshman right now. Um, and I think could be somebody that could eventually replace Reggie Jackson as that backup point guard behind Jamal Murray. We got Jalen Tyson to the Jazz at 29. True like three level scorer. This dude is an offensive beast at Cal. I don't think it's going to translate like all that well to the NBA level. So I'm a little skeptical on how he's going to be offensively. But the Jazz who ended up getting Stephon Castle earlier, I think they could take a chance on Tyson here. And then the Celtics at 30, another Colorado player, three in this first round with the Silva and Cody Williams. KJ Simpson is really good. When I was mentioning point guards like Bob Carrington over there, yeah, I like KJ Simpson more than I like uh, Tyrese Proctor. So I like this to the Celtics at 30. Could provide some more competition with Peyton Pritchard, but maybe they look for more of some big men help here at 30. Hey, just take Zach Eady here in my opinion. So just going to kind of quickly scroll through the second round. I like Dylan Jones a ton out of Weber State. I'm honestly trending towards a first round grade on him. Zach Eady to the Raptors at 32. 
I mean, have him be behind Jakob Pertl. They need big man depth. I think he does go in the first round still. I do. Um, AJ Mitchell out of Santa Barbara. Heard very good things about him. I haven't watched like too much Santa Barbara film, but from what I've like watched and read about him, he could be a first rounder also. Ose Godoro, first round potential as well from Marquette. I think him and De Silva, kind of similar prospects. Uh, De Silva out of Colorado. Bell Shireman, wow. Um, he was like a back end second round guy. Then I think had some steam as a mid second round guy. Gives him going pretty odd here. I like it though. I'm a big fan of Shireman. Harrison Ingram, wow. Okay. I mean, he's been very good for UNC this year as a, a transfer from Stanford. He's been hitting the shots. It goes down. Maybe he doesn't look like the most athletic guy out there, but I'm cool with him going in the top half of the second round. Um, and I'm glad to see him getting a little bit more praise as well. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't even realize he didn't have Ryan Dunn in the first round. That's wild. I mean, the Sixers get him at 37. That's insane. I would have had him go with their first round pick, whatever it was at 16. That's crazy. I don't think that happens. This mock draft is definitely different. Jamal Sheed from Houston going in the second round. I'm a fan of that. Let's get him in this draft. A Dembona going to the Knicks. That's that's fine. I think he's gonna take a little bit of time to develop. Hunter Salas of the Hornets at 41. I like him. I would maybe use a first round pick on him as well. Justin Edwards to the Spurs here at 43. He could honestly be a fringe first rounder, but he's somebody that's gonna take also a little bit of time to develop. San Antonio could be a good spot for him. Tower Cole going to the Heat at 45. Oh my God, you have Dalton Connect and Tower Cole to the Miami Heat. That is insane. Cam Jones from uh, Marquette, another Marquette player going to the Celtics here at 47. I like this. This dude is a very good scorer and stepped up when Tower Cole was out uh, towards the end of the Big East season and in the Big East tournament. Ethan Almanza going 49 to the Kings. Wow, I've seen him be like a fringe first rounder, so this seems pretty low for him. Same with Trey Alexander. I like him in the first round as well. He has him going 50. That seems very low. Hey, I'm pretty cool if Cam Spencer ends up getting drafted. Why not? He's a very smart player. Deron Holmes, 55. What? What? I could see this dude being a fringe lottery pick. 55? That's kind of crazy. Yeah, so this mock was definitely very different. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. I will even link to the article in the description if you want to take a look at it yourself. My next mock draft on the channel might be Thursday, actually. Just drop a thumbs up if you guys want to see that, like a sweet 16 edition of the mock. And then obviously we're going to do another one once the college basketball season is over in the second week of April. Make sure you follow my podcast. Link in the description uh, below. I did have the wrong Spotify and Apple podcast links in there for a little bit. So uh, maybe redirect directed you to a pod that only had like two episodes. Go check it out there now. I'm on like episode 18, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Link in the description. I love you guys. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.